you are about to watch an excellent interview between myself and a federal agent, Mr. John Risenhoover. And John has been on the channel in the past. First of all, I want to make this statement. The video is all about should you, if you're in your younger ages, say in your younger 20s, or if you know of anybody in your family, cousins, children, should they become a federal agent? So that's the whole theme of this video, and that is what this interview is all about, me interviewing an actual federal agent. And a lot of you are immediately going to say, oh, no way, you know, I'm not happy with the way the federal government is going right now. I am doing this video to help a lot of people who are looking for a quality job and think of it, if you're 22 years old and you got the next 40 years, say until you're 62, think of how things will change over the next 40 years, hopefully for the better for the federal government. First of all, your pay is pretty well etched in stone if you work for the federal government. And second of all, if you really don't like the way things are going, well, maybe if you're on the inside, maybe you can make a difference. Here is an interview with a gentleman who worked for the ATF. He's been on the channel, like I said, in the past. He's been part of Waco. We're not talking about Waco in this video. And yes, John was shot three times. He took three rounds during Waco. He was part of the initial raid. And he lived through it. And he's been part of a lot of other big major stories including the Oklahoma bombing. So here is a federal agent and myself talking to each other, basically saying, is a federal agent good for Americans right now? Is there anybody in your family tree that's looking for a job? Should they take the route of working for the federal government as a federal agent, I asked them at the FBI and everything else. So be open-minded, thumb it up, and say, hey, you know what? At least, you know, maybe 40 years from now, things will be better. Or hopefully 10 years from now. Maybe I want my son to get involved in this. Maybe if you're younger, maybe you want to get involved. Here we go. Enjoy this wonderful interview. Welcome to WeaponsEducation.com. Should you be a federal agent? Hey, for all you youngsters or parents who have children wondering what they should do in life, should they get in the military first, should they go to college, uh, how should they plan their future? Is a federal agent a possibility for them? Hey, I'd like to try to help, and what I've got here is my good friend John. Welcome back. Ben. Thank you very much, Tom. Oh gosh, this guy is such a pleasure to know for me, it's, and uh, John, uh, if you haven't seen him in the past on the channel, I'll, I'll remind you, he's a federal agent, ATF, super pro gun. I'll let you say it. What are the top five things you've done so far in your career? Uh, probably uh, developed the National Crime Gun Intelligence Strategy for Department of Justice and ATF. Developed the Crime Gun Intelligence Center in Denver, the Aurora Theater shooting, uh, Oklahoma City bombing case. I was one of the primary Ooh. investigators on that, and I was also in Waco. Done a couple other things, too. Right, so, and uh, the movie theater shooting, I couldn't even imagine being part of that. So becoming a federal agent is the focus of this video. I mean, part of the Oklahoma City bombing. It's got to have a, a lot of surprises becoming a federal agent, correct? Right, it really does. Now, I want to point out, you are 100% pro-gun. You do not want more gun laws, is that correct? Right, if you go look at any of the writings I have out there on my blog or anything else, you'll really see that... The answer isn't gun control, it's actually shooter control and addressing the bad behavior of a very small percentage of the population. So we have a pro-gun federal agent here on the show, my friend, he's been on the show before, and his link below is to, to his Facebook is there, and please go like it, because he's a good guy with the federal government who is who's pro-gun and he's trying to help us. Now, I'm doing this video, I, I asked John to speak about this topic because I like to help youngsters and not knowing what direction in life they should go. You know, part of the problem with youngsters these days is, you know, they're it's you're confused. You know, you're 17, 18, and, you know, you got all your gadgets. Kids are on their 
playing video games and they're with the, on their texting and they're dealing with girlfriends and they're going back and forth on life and they don't know what to do. And they're 20, 21, 22 years old and all of a sudden, you know, they're adults now. What are you going to do? What are your options? Federal agent. Sounds pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it really is. All right, now I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell us first about you, you know, what got you to become a federal agent? Well, I, after I graduated college, I'd been in the Marine Corps Reserves to help pay for college. And then I graduated in Texas right when the SNL crisis was going on, and I really was looking for a job. And then I found about ATF, and it seemed like a lot of fun. I mean, they really were the federal street cops. They didn't, they went out and arrested bad guys. They targeted shooters. It wasn't sitting in an office like an FBI agent would do. It's a very aggressive job out on the streets. And, and for those of the audience who really don't understand, you know, you got alcohol, then you got tobacco, <laughs> and you got firearms, and then you got bombs. So when you're an ATF agent, exactly, you know, what do you get assigned towards alcohol? Do you get assigned towards tobacco? You know, what's the deal? Really, alcohol and tobacco are syntax laws that have existed for ATF back when they were U.S. prohibition. There's really nothing done on alcohol at all anymore. The alcohol industry regulates itself extremely well. They pay their taxes on time. They're a pleasure to deal with. The tobacco industry is pretty much the same way. The only thing you'll see anybody do periodically with tobacco is when people are smuggling cigarettes from a low-tax state to a high-tax state, and they'll get in trouble for that, but it's not that big of a priority for ATF. Uh, the explosive is something ATF, of course, works, and those are random events and you come across those periodically. I remember when I started my career, my number one thing was having to go deal with dynamite that some Texas rancher left out in a fridge in a field, which was always the scariest thing I've ever done because it was, yeah. it was crystallized. It wasn't a pleasant thing to do. And mainly what we deal with today is firearms and what we're really trying to get ATF to focus their efforts on. I mean, I'm retired now, so it's sort of harder for me to do. Just when retired, I, yeah. Yeah, but when I, when I was an ATF agent, I developed the National Crime and Intelligence Strategy and was the NIBIN National Coordinator. I tried to focus ATF to target just shooters, because that's the value. Yeah, so let's focus on that. So if someone wants to become an ATF agent, it doesn't mean you have to go trying to enforce gun laws and ruin people's lives who own guns. You, as an ATF agent, want to in, entice people to understand what the Second Amendment is, understand what your rights are as an American, you have the right to bear arms. Just don't break the law. Right. Don't break the law. And if the people who do break the law, then then, then you, that's your job is to go after the bad guys. Right. Ex elaborate on that as, you know. Well, most, most of the time, the thick cases you see ATF doing today, if it's not going after actual shooters where we have a crime gun intelligence center, you'll see them going after convicted felons with guns. Uh, they love to go out and buy drugs mm -hmm. and trying to get to the guns. And uh, periodically arson explosive cases. ATF does is the national lead on big arson cases. They have the most trained, well-equipped arson investigators in the nation, and they do a phenomenal job everywhere there's a big so arson. So if you're a young person, you're interested in, in doing that type of scientific type of work right. with arson, uh, it, it could be a great career for somebody. You, get, you have to be really smart. I never got into the arson stuff because <laughs> the math involved alone was more than I could handle. It's, it's a serious science. You were more involved, I guess, in the investigations. I like you said, the firearms. But you're not, I want to make it clear to the audience, he's a good guy. He's on our side. He's pro-gun. He's not trying, as an agent, and never has tried to uh, take guns out of, out of the, the rights of Americans and take our guns away. What you've tried to do is go after shooters, felons, bad people, bad guys, and stop them from committing murders in the future. Right. You know, in my career, I've, I've posed as undercover assassin and was hired by a guy to kill his wife. Ooh. I've done things like that. I want to hear about that story. Well, it's it's not as it's pretty boring, really. It, it's right. not like you're going into long-term care. Right, so he didn't kill her. No, <laughs> I, I was supposed to kill her, and I didn't kill her. So she oh, you didn't kill her. Okay, gotcha. But those things happen. But the majority of the time. You do some undercover work, you do some explosive work, you do some felon possession, you'll do search warrants on felons with guns, uh, a lot of stuff with drugs. It, it can be an interesting job. There's still a lot of paperwork. Today you have to document everything. You have, it takes a lot of time. That's, to be yeah, very you need to know that if you get into that field. Yeah, you need well, to know how to use a computer. You have to be good with it. Yeah, and that's all youngsters, you know, when you're parents, tell your kids, I'm a parent. My kids now, seven, eight, nine year old daughters, I want them to understand that computer inside and out so when they're 18 to 21 to 25, when they're getting a real job, 
you know, they can get into anything they want in life. Learn to type. Learn, Learn to type. Learn, Learn to, to type. type correctly. It makes a difference. All right. So the, now, now federal, what are the benefits uh, as far as money? It, 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 money. it pays better than any, pretty much any street cop. It pays better, to be honest. It's not as dangerous. Any of the federal agencies are not as dangerous as being a patrol cop. Uh, the guy with the most dangerous job on the streets yeah. today is the guy doing a traffic stop yep. tonight at 10 o'clock at night. There's nobody who has a more dangerous job than that. And he's by himself and he's exposed. So it pays extremely well compared to other other jobs out there. You probably, by the end of your career, you're making $150,000 a year. So that's phenomenal. You're starting out about 30. Oh, that low, okay. Yeah, you don't start out really high. but And that's pretty. That's across the board from ATF to FBI to Secret Service to DEA. Okay. Yeah, but if you can move up the ladder from a youngster, you know, 21 to 23 years old, and you know, by the time you're 30, you're making 60, 70, 80 grand a year. Right. And you can get married and have a family. It's something to look look, look into you if you want to do the right thing and do what John says is focus on the bad guys with guns, the shooters, and their behavioral, the way they behave badly prior to actually committing murder. I mean, that's when you're an investigator, like, like you've done your whole life. You've, you've told me you like to investigate the behavioral patterns of shooters before they commit the murder. You know, not, oh, there's a murder. You got this person, who's, he's, in, he's in jail for life now, and then you got dead people. Yeah, so uh, there's a, if you want to get into the way I'm, I'm reading it from what you've told me and gotten to know you pretty well, you want to get into uh, becoming a federal agent, you, you can be good for your soul if you do the right thing. Right. You have to have a college degree. We hire a ton of people out of the military. That's a really good way to do it, but we do, we do need a college degree. And I tell you, it's, it's, a, it's a good profession. If you really want to make a difference and impact crime, you have the ability to do that in your career. And a lot of, and most, like I always make the comment, most people in law enforcement are wolves. They really do want to go after they're, well, they're sheepdogs. They want to go after the wolf. They want to get. They want to make their community safer. They want to get to protect the sheep in the community, and that's who they are. I think you just impacted who knows how many thousands of people to change their path in life right now because they didn't think they're good enough possibly to become a federal agent. They hear the word federal. Ooh, that's that's not for me. That's for special people. But, but that's that's for, not true. It, you you've seen the TV shows and you've seen people talk about that and you think you have to be a world class athlete. If you want to get hired by the Secret Service or some weird, bizarre thing to get hired by the CIA, the reality is they're always looking for good, quality people—people people with that who have a clean history and are hardworking and intelligent. And I tell you right now, that's what they're really looking for. You don't have to be a world-class athlete to get hired by somebody. They're looking for good, competent people who come to work and put their put their lives on the line every day. It's so important. I did a video once called. Uh... Uh, you made a mistake or something to that effect, and no gun for you. You know, you got arrested, no gun for you. These youngsters have to learn to keep a good, clean record. Right. Do things right. Uh, family morals is all part of it as you're growing up. And do things right, and then when it's time for you, because I know a lot of youngsters are watching. Now it's time for you, you want to go to college, you went to Baylor. Right. Uh, Marine. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then you went to the ATF and applied for a job, got your job. Yep. You know, now, yeah, you're, you're a 50 year old guy and you've got the whole life still ahead of you with a wonderful pension and uh, health insurance for them. Health insurance. Pension's not as good as it used to be. All it's right. gone down a lot. But I, I'm not, I'm not lie about it. If you look at the pensions a lot of people are getting now, they're getting no pension anymore. Okay. So federal employees still get treated very well. Um, it's, it's, it's a good secure job. You're never going to become a millionaire. But it's a good, healthy living, and you know, if you want to see the world, there's some great agencies out there. Secret Service. If you want to see the world, join Secret Service. Those guys travel all the time. DEA travels a lot. FBI. It's it's more of a brain job. You're going to sit in an office a whole lot more than you see on TV. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you the truth about that. Yeah. They're not out kicking doors every day. They really they a lot of that terrorism stuff they do, and they do a ton of terrorism. It's done in an office every single day. The boring stuff. Somebody has to do it, and they do a good job at it. Well, they, they really do a great do, job. They do a great yeah. job at it. I agree. So if you want some a little bit more exciting, ATF, uh, I didn't realize until getting to know you so well that 90% of ATF agents, in your opinion, are pro-gun. They're not against us. The politicians are. That's a different story. Uh, but it might be a career for you. And I just wanted to do this video. 
while John's on the set and hopefully change some people's careers path and make the right decisions in life for yourself, you youngsters. All right, parents, show this to your kids, and it's an option. Becoming a federal agent's an option, and it's not impossible. Do whatever you wish. My name is Tom, and, and John's uh, got an excellent blog. Uh, it's uh, John's... John's Gun Blog. John's, John's Gun Blog. I'll put the link below. And I'll also put the link below to the shirt you see here, CCW Safe. Very important that you realize, uh, you know, I'm affiliated with CCW Safe. I've done videos on uh, pre-legal type of pr product where you pay about $75 a year. It's not too much money. You keep the card in your wallet right next to your driver's license, right next to your concealed license to carry your gun legally, and heaven forbid you shoot someone in self-defense, you got all your legal team right there, and John now is part of the advisory board of CCW Safe. So I'll put that link below also, and also the video I did on CCW Safe, prepaid legal for shooting someone in self-defense is huge and very important. But the focus of this video is, should you become a federal agent? And by the way, what's the age limit? I don't even know. What you, have to, you have to be 21 years old, and the mandatory retirement currently is 57, so you have to be hired before you turn 37. So if you're 35, you can still become an you agent? You can still become one. There you go. All right, it's all good. It's all good. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, brother. You're top notch. Check it out. My name is Tom from Weapons Education. Share this thing with everybody. Bye-bye.